Hi, Bob from PineGrow here. The PineGrow web editor is a powerful tool for web design and development. However, it can be a bit daunting at first. Let's take a quick look at the main features to get you building your web projects in no time at all. When you first open the PineGrow app, it displays the home screen, a page that will contain the thumbnail images of all your existing projects, plus options for starting new projects. There are four main icons to choose from along the top of the screen. The first, New Page or Projects, allows you to do just that, start a new page or project from scratch. We'll come back to this icon shortly. The second allows you to open an existing local HTML document. This can either be a page you've previously created with PineGrow or a page like a template that you've downloaded from the internet. The third icon allows you to open any website from the internet. This can be used to redesign an existing website, even if you don't have the original HTML code. Finally, the fourth icon allows you to open folders as PineGrow projects. That way you can easily work with all the files of the project. Clicking on the first icon brings up a framework selection modal. Various frameworks are located along the left hand side. And this includes pre-made blocks for both the Tailwind and Bootstrap 5 frameworks. Selecting a framework brings up a number of templates to select from on the right. Clicking any of these will open the template in the editor. While PineGrow can work with individual files to unlock the full potential, it's best to save your file as a project. So if we select Bootstrap 5 and select just a basic template like pricing. It's recommended that the first thing that you do is go up to File and click Save As. Select a save location with a new folder and click Save. PineGrow will then ask if you want to open that folder as a project. Opening this as a project now gives you access to all of the assets that are within the folder. This can include things like the Bootstrap theme if you have a Bootstrap project open, as well as the JavaScript associated with it, and any other assets that you might want to add like other JavaScript files or images. Saving as a project also copies any necessary framework resources to the newly created folder. The PineGrow editor itself is divided into several functional sections that surround the central page view. This view emulates what will be shown when you open your HTML document in a browser. This forms the core of designing your web page visually. The page view has a number of controls. On the top tab, there is a name of the page, in this case, pricing.html. There can also be multiple icons depending on how many page views are open. To open additional views, you can click the icon to the right with the plus sign. The X to the right of any particular page view will close that view. If you want to close the page entirely, click the X on the tab. Above each individual page view, there's a drop down of screen sizes and features for that particular page view. Simply selecting a responsive width will change that particular view to that particular size. You can also set sizes by typing into the box to the right of the drop down or by simply resizing the screen by grabbing the right hand side and dragging it. Depending on the framework, there may be additional controls to toggle the displays of columns or a grid. Finally, if there is more than one page view open, there will also be a paintbrush displayed at the right side of the view next to the closing X. This icon determines what rules will be displayed in the Styles panel when styling for different size pages with media queries. Note, selection of this does not make changes to your CSS. PineGrow does not add media queries into your CSS automatically. 
selection of a particular size page only displays what the active rules will be like in your style panel. And we'll go over this a little bit more later. Moving on from the central page view, let's look at the other parts of the editor. All of the tools in PineGrow are organized into a number of panels. By default, there are two sections of panels flanking the main page view. You can make changes to these panel arrangements by going to the Window menu, selecting Workspace, and then changing it. For example, if you have a larger screen, you can use it in four column. If you want it back to the original, again, you go to the Window menu, Workspace, and select Default. This comes in handy if you have multiple monitors or a really large monitor where you want to have a number of different panels available at all times. All of the panels have two icons in their upper right hand corner. The first is an eye icon and helps to control visibility. So a lot of times we want to eliminate pretty much all of the panels except for maybe one while we're working in a page view to maximize our real estate. If we click on the eye icon, so for example, if we have the project menu open and click on the eye icon, when we now click on the eye icon in the top bar, it will hide all of the panels except for the page view and anywhere we have toggled this eye. So we click here and now we have a lot more room to work on our main page view. Clicking the eye again brings all the panels back. The second icon in the upper right hand corner of all of the panels allows you to undock the panel. This again is useful if you have uh, two monitors, you can have all your tools on one monitor along and your page view on another monitor. And again, if we click on the X in the upper right hand corner, this puts the panel back into place. So now let's look at some of the individual panels. So starting on the left hand side, we've already seen the project panel. This of course lists all the files that are in our project. And if we click the drop down next to the quick to the project title, we can see that we can do a few other things. We can refresh or reload the project. We can add a new folder to organize our files. We can add a new page and this refers to an HTML page. So if we click this, you can see we bring our frameworks up again and we can select any page that we wish. We can add or create a new file. This is for example, for creating a new JavaScript file or a new styling file. Um, and then there's another, a couple of other things like delete backups and remote URLs that we're not going to go into right now. So that's the first panel on the left. The next panel that I'd like to point out on the left is the library panel. So this is sort of your big working panel where you do a lot of your work. So again, Pinegro is a visual editor. Basically it frees you up from having to type code to a large extent. And instead what you can do is drag in different, different HTML elements to create your page. So for example, down here, we have an H1 here, pricing, we can add an H2 below that. And so all I had to do was just drag it from the library over onto the page. And then at this point, you can double click or click on the text thing to edit. And go ahead and make whatever changes you want. And then that will make um, or, or put that change that you just made into an H2 element. And as you can see, there's a wide variety, pretty much all of the HTML elements you could want uh, listed in the library. And depending on the framework that you have selected, there's also going to be uh, framework specific items like grid for bootstrap five. In the library panel, in addition to the list tab, if I just make this a little bit larger, you can see there's sometimes additional tabs up here. Uh, they are going to be present if there are certain frameworks open, for example, Bootstrap or Tailwind, and they generally contain uh, more complex elements that have been pre-designed and can be quickly dragged to the page. So just looking at that very quickly, the blocks uh, contains a number of different pre-made blocks 
Uh, and again, all you have to do is go ahead and open one of these up. And if you like it, you can just go ahead and drag it right to your page. So that's the very heart of PineGrow is being able to take things from the library and quickly drag them to the page. Moving on, let's look at the other panel that's located to the left of the page view in our default setup. And that's the project panel. So we've already looked at this previously. Uh, but just to recap, it gives us an overview of all of the files that are in our project. And in addition, there's a drop down menu next to the project name that allows us to add folders, new HTML pages, as well as creating files like CSS or JavaScript files. Now moving on to the right side of the panel. So there are a number of panels to the right of the page view that I would consider to be essential and some that are optional. Let's look at the essential ones first. Starting at the very left, we have the design panel. If we click on that tab and we don't have the design panel added to the theme, then we have to activate it. That will bring up a panel of base design elements that we can add to our page. So we can change the palette of colors that's used. We can change the typography uh, and uh, background and a number of other options. This panel is going to look slightly different depending on whether you have a bootstrap project, a tailwind project, or a plain HTML project. So the, the overall number of options are gonna be different. I encourage you to look through the documentation. We have an entire video just on this topic for each different framework. Uh, the next panel over is the properties panel. The properties panel is divided up into two sections. In the top section, you have three areas. You have the classes. That's going to list all of the classes that are on the currently selected item. So if we select this item, can see there's a single class if we select uh, this card whoops card header we can go down here to the breadcrumbs at the bottom and jump back and select the whole card uh, we can see that there are three we can also add classes uh, from within the properties panel this will bring up a modal to add those the second area here is the info section this is going to be used to add IDs to various elements we can also name the elements, and that name is going to be shown in our DOM tree that I will get to in a few panels. Uh, and then title allows you to add a title to the element. This final section of the upper part of the properties panel is the attribute editor. This allows you to add attributes to the uh, element that is selected in the page view. Uh, just click on the add attribute button, then type in the uh, name of the attribute and the value of the attribute. The lower section of the properties panel is going to look much different depending on what framework is opened. For plain HTML projects, there won't be a lot in the lower section of the property panel. For things like Tailwind and Bootstrap, there'll be quite a bit and they will consist of all of the custom controls that are unique to those frameworks. You can see that some of these are blue. That's because there are classes that are derived from those custom controls placed on the element that's selected on the page. So if we select a different one, pricing, we can see that there's a heading class of heading one, as well as a couple of text classes on that. If we want to change any of these, we can just go ahead and click. Now we can see that that's reflected over here on the uh, page, as well as adding this new class of text dash danger. So rather than having to memorize all these either tailwind or bootstrap classes to style your page, uh, you can instead use these visual controls. We're going to skip the next panel. It's used for Tailwind and simplifies the addition of multiple classes by grouping them. And go to the fourth icon over, the Style panel. So within the Style panel, you can add any custom rules that you want to the elements that are selected on the page. One of the things to point out here is that we're, right now we are looking at the Active tab. And again, if we have more than one page view open, whichever view has the paintbrush 
is the one that is going to control this style panel and the rules that apply to it are going to be shown here. In this case, the text-danger class is applied to both of these, but if you had media queries that only displayed on larger pages, they wouldn't be shown if uh, we select this paintbrush. The way you create rules is you can either enter in a existing class name or ID or other selector into this box and click create, or you can click on the ellipse. The ellipse will bring up a breadcrumb of all of the different potential selectors for this element. And then you can just click to create the selector that you wish to create. If desired, you can also add a media query by clicking on this button and then selecting a breakpoint from the breakpoints that are installed for your particular page. Then once you uh, select those, you click create and it will produce a new rule. If you do not produce a new rule uh, and leave style attribute highlighted, this will add all of your styling in line. So once you've created a rule that targets the element that you want to, so let's go ahead and pick one for here. Let's go ahead, create a new rule and call it HW, uh, I guess FW normal. So normally I would probably add a brand new class, but we're just going to use the existing ones. We hit create. We now have a new rule that's going to be in our own bootstrap.css page. Now what we can do is go into the lower section of the style panel and select from all of these different controls that allow us to add CSS properties fairly easily. So we can jump to each of the sections by selecting the icons at the top. So for example, if we want to go to the text section, we click on that. We'll bring the font and text section to the top open that drop down and we have a whole bunch of things we can select. Let's go ahead and change the color. Click on the color selector. Let's make it a nice yellow. And we can see that now each of the different text elements have changed that are targeted by this H4 with a class of FW dash normal are now yellow. The other thing that you can do within this panel is you can uh, style things like the hover colors. So let's change the hover color for this h4.fw normal. So again, we're going to the ellipsis, click on that h4.fw normal. This time we'll click on the colon. This allows us to add a pseudo class. We're going to select hover and hit create. So let's change it to say a green on hover. So we're just going to go ahead and type that in here. And you can see that nothing has happened over on our page until we hover. So that can kind of be a limitation, having to check to see that what styling you've added looks correct. And so what you can do is you can actually click on a button up here of these four and it will add that pseudo class for you. Now it's just like we were constantly hovering over this and we can make any changes we want. So for example, if we want to increase the size on hover. Now, if we click this off, it goes back to the normal. As soon as we hover, it changes size and changes color. We're going to skip the next tab. It's the interactions tab that allows you to add animation. And we're going to go to this tab here the tr that opens the tree panel. So the tree panel is basically a hierarchical display of all the HTML on the page. This allows you to uh, sometimes more precisely place elements from the library. So we can go over to the library and say that we wanted to place another H2 uh, within this card. So right now we've got this top title selected over here in the tree. If we wanted to select the uh, title of the next one, so we can close this card down, go to the next card, look at the header, can select that H4. Say we wanted to place an H2 after that, which is a little bit, uh, not something we would normally do, but we can do that. You can just go ahead and drag it right in and you can see now this is gonna be placed at the same level as that H4 within the card header. 
Uh, the next panel over is the actions panel. Uh, again, this is a relatively non-essential one. It's used primarily when uh, using uh, master pages and when using components. This is an aspect of the uh, content management system that PineGrow has. And then the final uh, icon over that's displayed by default is the WordPress theme icon. This opens a panel of actions that you can add when creating a WordPress theme. This actually won't show if you haven't purchased the WordPress theme add-on. Not shown in these panels is one other panel that I find often quite useful, and that's the uh, element code panel. So if we go up to window, and then select the show hide panels item and go down here to the bottom, we can see that there's another tool that's hidden called element code. If we go ahead and select that, we can see that it pops up this window over here that shows essentially the code, the actual HTML code of the element that's selected. So if we choose a different one, we can see that this has uh, an H4 and a couple of classes. And so we can edit our code directly over here if we uh, so wish. The other thing that goes along with this is the code icon here at the very top of the page. If we click on that, we can see it opens a code window down below. And if we click in the tree, we can see it will scroll to the section of code that's represented uh, by that particular area of the tree. And we can feel free to edit our code directly. So hopefully this quick intro has shown the main controls that you need in PineGrow to put together web pages quickly and easily. There are numerous other tools built into PineGrow to help you create your design vision that we haven't covered here and we highly encourage you to look through the rest of the online documentation at your convenience.